This is In The Street Radio. It's the radio station I tune into every day when I wake up. It's what's known as a pirate radio station, meaning that it is unlicensed by the FCC. New York is a hot spot for pirate radio. Brooklyn alone has over 100 illicit stations, usually serving up programming for an immigrant community which isn't served by mainstream broadcasters. From Orthodox Jewish broadcasts, to Dominican bachata music, to East Indian stations like the one you're hearing. The goal of this mini-documentary is to locate and interview operators of these stations to understand who they are and how some of my favorite radio stations operate. Through a process of elimination, I'll test different techniques to accomplish these goals. So you can just follow me around, okay? Okay, sounds good. Cool. I'm gonna get the binoculars. Okay. <laughs> no, I don't. But the idea is that we'll go to the roof and see if we can find any antennas except for that, that close one. Um, Mm. Okay, lady, are you gonna help me find the radios? <laughs> Here, let's get lady in this backpack. Come on, you gotta help me find the fire radio stations. Go on. Here we go. Are you coming? Yes. <laughs> the squad. <laughs> Notebook, binoculars, we're ready to roll. To the roof. <laughs> Approach number one. Find antennas visually and gumshoe until I find their owner. street to check it out. I think it's up there. I asked someone coming out of the building if they'd allow me to inspect the transmitter on the roof and they agreed. set about to see what I could learn. So, it's, here we've got, what do we have? This cable. And it looks like into the the barber shop. 
I came back later that week to ask around at the barber shop about the transmitter. They didn't know anything about it. I went online to see what I could learn about the transmitter. I just spent 30 minutes being cyberbullied by amateur radio operators, and they told me to build a Yagi Una directional antenna and point it at this source over here. And then we can see a, a spike in the in the band on that software defined radio and we can find, figure out what they're what they're putting out. So uh, I'm going to the hardware store. I successfully completed a directional Yagi Uda antenna, which would let me pick up signal strength in a particular direction and effectively allow me to locate pirate radio stations based on their broadcast strength. I headed to the roof to test it out. It's a huge ass cockroach down there. I've never seen a bigger cockroach in my entire life. Uh, look at it. You're gone. getting it kind of really low it's at like a peak of 69 70 ish and a floor of 83 we're gonna try to turn this antenna can you look at the antenna for a second around and try to figure out where this signals coming from is the idea so I'm just gonna manipulate it and see what we get Probably from the church. But if I point it over towards, come bring it in a little bit. So here, when I point it this way, it's it's playing this like whatever this is. Can you? Yeah. I don't know if you can pick that up. That's like American indie rock. But if I point it towards East Flatbush, check this out. Now it's now it's in the streets radio. Well, actually, it's a mix of both. That way. <laughs> it's that way. <laughs> I, I can't believe it.
know that song, right? Mm-hmm, I sure do. Just a man, a ladder, a <laughs> laptop, and a BBC pipe, bus tape measure, antenna. So it's, it's this way. What the fuck is this? Well, Maybe I'm, like Sloan's place. I'm gonna go to Sloan's place on the roof and we're gonna fucking check this out. And then we'll be closer and we can like really dial it in, you know? It's out on us. Anyways, that was a good shoot, right? Mm -hmm. Later that night, I received a cryptic email from a pirate radio researcher who directed me to the very same neighborhood that my antenna had pointed me to. Hopefully, on the ground, we would be able to locate the precise location of Industries Radio. So, perhaps not terribly surprising, but it's pointing me straight at Little Caribbean off of East Flatbush. So I'm gonna take a couple more tests from up here and try it from different points to make sure it's not some weird reflection thing that I don't understand. Um, and then I guess we hit the streets again and see what's what. This is the mobile setup. It's on the, on the old backpack. Got the antenna, we're gonna find it. So this is the new move. We're gonna just basically play hot or colder I'll walk two blocks and we'll take another reading until hopefully it brings me where we're trying to go. Oh man, so I turned down that street and check this thing out. That looks pretty promising, don't you think? I took a reading and this is not the signal that we were looking for, so I moved on. After about a million years of walking block to block and taking readings, the signal strength started to get extremely high. Uh, it was then that a man stopped me on the sidewalk and told me that he knew the exact location of Industries Radio. I picked up my things, and despite my readings reading contrary to his advice, I headed over to investigate. Well, that was a dead end and it's getting dark, so I'm gonna head back and try a different strategy. My uh, antenna got caught in the spokes and it ripped the, the end off of it. So I've gotta make do without this, I guess. Um, yeah, that's no good. So since my um, antenna broke, um, I'm just gonna go one for one down all of these in the in the pirate radio map and see if I can find some kind of online presence that I can reach out to. I, I guess, like, unless someone donates me a new Yagi Uda in the next two days, this is pretty much my only option. Hey y'all, uh, it's Hayden uh, from the very morning of the festival. I'm, I'm out of time. So I'm going to walk you through my internet sleuthery uh, just directly in a video right now, rather than cut together something super elaborate. So I'll turn your attention to my conspiracy board, uh, which is on screen, uh, which will walk through kind of the steps of how I learned uh, what I'm gonna reveal to you at the end. It all started with this audio advertisement uh, on this radio station, which I'll play a clip, a little clip of right now. And at the end of that segment, uh, it provides you with a phone number to call. So I, I called the phone number and I wasn't getting anything back. I texted them to see if I could get in contact with someone who knew the station. Uh, no dice. So what I did is I took the phone number and I went to a Google search and um, I was able to find uh, an address listed for that business. So I hopped on the bike and I pedaled over there to see if that business was still uh, operating. And what I found is that it had closed down, it no longer existed, but there was a man um, running a juice shop 
right next door who I, I stopped in to ask about. So here's his card. I'll blur out the details there. But he told me that he used to have a customer uh, who was involved with Pirate Radio at that station, but he no longer lived there. So I knew I was on the right track. What I did is that I went to Google Maps history and found uh, an old business which sh shared the same address as business A from that audio ad. Um, and I just looked at the, uh, the um, photos from inside of that business and I saw that on the sandwich board for this restaurant, there were two phone numbers listed. One was the same as business A from the audio ad, but two totally separate businesses over time. And the second was um, a phone number I hadn't found yet. The, the craziest thing about this is that the um, former business, this restaurant that preceded the juice shop, that preceded the, the cleaning service, um, shared the same name as the DJ that I was looking for. Um, so that together shows that he is in... <clears throat> Uh, never mind. Just watch the next clip. So we just had a breakthrough. Um, I've been basically scouring the internet for information that I could find to track down uh, this guy. Um, and I, I found a, a third phone number that I called just a moment ago. And I got actually the DJ from In The Street Radio on the line. So I, I'm super excited. He, um, he told me to send him some info via text to that phone number to vet me and check me out, make sure I'm not like a federale or whatever, um, and uh, express that he might be interested in talking to me. So I'm going to send that to him now and uh, see where we get. So I talked to him twice on the phone uh, for a period of about 20 minutes, um, but I, I couldn't get him to uh, commit to an interview, which I, I understand. Um, so let's watch a little clip to help understand why that hesitancy might be there. Every radio broadcast above a certain low power level needs an FCC license. But by definition, pirate radio is unlicensed and unlawful. This is why we have taken major enforcement actions against pirate radio operators, especially in and around cities where they're most prevalent, like New York, Boston, and Miami. For example, we just proposed two large fines, the maximum amounts permitted under the law, against apparently illegal broadcasters in Boston. As a result, they each face over $100,000 in proposed fines. Of course, we will review any response or new evidence that is presented before we consider imposing a fine. But in any case, this should serve as yet another warning to pirate radio operators that we will not stand by. 